Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And a very very good morning. First and foremost, I would like to thank Madam Sim Ling Ling, the chairperson, the moderator, who is also the CEO of Ethos Connect International Consulting, Sendirim Berhad, Madam Hani Wijaja, the Global Commercial Director of Business Assurance and Food Intertech, and Mr. Douglas Bennett, the head of Bi Microbiology Intertech, for the kind invitation extended to me to be a part of this momentous program. I applaud this jointly webinar organized by Ethos and Intertech to share our insights and thoughts about the tourism direction in the age of coronavirus and traveling in the new norm and how we could make tourism more safe and secure. I was made to understand that this webinar is also participated by private sectors around the globe in the UK, Germany, Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, Jordan, as well as 100 other countries of Intertex group of company. Thank you for your commitment to be part of the team. I strongly believe that together we will be able to support each other in mitigating the challenges of COVID-19 pandemic which has impacted heavily on our tourism arrivals and revenues. As the Minister of Malaysia Tourism, Arts and Culture, MOTAC, I am tasked to lead not just my team in MOTAC, but the whole industry players to ensure that we will be able to bring our tourism industry back to its glory days sooner than expected. This is by promoting new safe travel protocols, thus building trust and confidence among travelers to travel again. As we all know, the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, which began in June, January 2020, has had a tremendous impact on many facets of our lives and has contributed to a major shift in the way individuals and organizations work. This includes how we consume, how we learn, how we work and how we socialize and communicate. Therefore, it is indeed timely for us to discuss the direction of tourism in the new norm as part of our commitment towards responsible tourism and ensuring that health and safety continues to be part of the highest priority. Ladies and gentlemen, Malaysia's strategies to break the chain of infection appeared to have been successful so far as recovery rates exceed the new COVID-19 cases and increase in green zones. Our battle against COVID-19 seems to be going well with double efforts from frontliners and many are diligently adhering to the MCO. While the pandemic is not over yet, many can take comfort in these victories since Malaysia's response to COVID-19 has now earned international recognition. Malaysia's response to the virus has been applauded by the World Health Organization. WATAG has developed a post-MCO tourism and cultural recovery plan to help revive the industry. But first and foremost, it is important to restore people's confidence to travel again. The pandemic has caused people to, visit, to be vigilant and limit their activities, but we need to adapt to survive. As industry leaders, we need to give assurance that the industry practices the new norms to ensure safety and hygiene as the utmost priority. Through our agency Tourism Malaysia, we will strengthen our domestic tourism initiatives under the Chuti Chuti Malaysia campaign, intensify our public relation activities and social media promotions, including online collaborations with corporate companies, key opinion leaders of calls and influencers. We will also enhance the quality of tourism products and services by adapting the new normal to boost the confidence of tourists to travel again. Hence, encouraging them to stay longer, visit more places, and spend more. On this point, I would like to urge the industry players from both tourism and cultural sectors to ensure the services and products provided are of the highest quality, especially on health, safety, 
cleanliness and hygiene. As for the international market, the Ministry plans to promote arrivals from short-haul markets such as ASEAN, mainly through cross-border tourism. For starters, the concept of travel bubble with green zone countries identified by the World Health Organization or WHO is gaining popularity among countries that have managed to contain the spread of COVID-19 and are worth considering. However, its implementation is subject to bilateral discussions with paramount consideration on the aspects of health, immigration, data tracking, and continuous monitoring by respective agencies concerned in both countries. Currently, Malaysia is discussing with Singapore on the Reciprocal Green Lane or RGL. At the same time, we are also exploring on the possibilities of having a travel bubble with other safe or green zone countries such as Brunei, Australia and New Zealand. The Ministry of Health Director General Datuk Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah said that other countries with no new cases for 28 days would also be considered. However, this is just in the planning and we have not allowed any country yet. It must be mutual as some issues must be ironed out by both countries before we can allow the green lane or green bubble. Some countries in the world have imposed new regulations to the international travelers to pay for a coronavirus test or spend 14 days in quarantine with the focus very much on providing the maximum health and financial security possible. Under the new user pay system, a set fee will be charged for whatever process an inbound foreign passenger requires with all undergoing a mandatory RT-PCR test on arrival. Malaysia is, worth closely, is working closely with the member countries and economies of ASEAN, APEC, UNWTO, IMTGT, and BIM IAGA to achieve effective recovery protocols by developing meaningful action plans that optimize sector-wide rec recovery efforts. Ultimately, we envision a future of travel which is safe, secure, seamless and provides an authentic and meaningful experience to the traveller across the journey. One which supports the livelihoods of millions and contributes to sustainable economic growth. ASEAN, for instance, is working towards formulating ASEAN-wide-ranging wide, wide SOPs to facilitate travellers without neglecting as essential aspects of health and safety of frontliners, tourists and tourism employees. For example, the requirement for a standardized health certificate within ASEAN. To ensure the safety of its workforce and travellers as the sector shifts to a new normal, ASEAN will also be using digital technology. This is also to support the recovery efforts of tourism activities and to help prevent the spread of COVID-19 in ASEAN member states. For example, mobile applications for contact tracing and as tracking tools to control the spread of COVID-19. Another measure to regain travelers' confidence towards the health and safety of ASEAN tourism destinations is through effective communication on the current status of COVID-19 and ASEAN tourism destinations operations. Ladies and gentlemen, MOTEC submitted 12 SOPs for the reopening of tourism and cultural sector, which among others include the implementation of physical distancing, sanitization and disinfection of hotels, guest rooms and vehicles, and training of tourist guides to ensure compliance to the SOPs and to safeguard tourists from possible, possible risk infection. As of date, 10 SOPs have been approved by the National Security Council and Ministry of Health as follows. First, art, culture and heritage exhibition at the premises and public cultural facilities. Second, hotel accommodation premises. Third, tour operating companies. Fourth, 
licensed travel and tour guide guiding, fifth, tourism training institutes, six, Malaysia Homestay Experience Program, seven, adventurous and outdoor activities, eight, scuba diving and snorkeling activities, nine, drive theme parks, and ten, live performances and shows. These SOPs have been officially published by NSC and accessible from all platforms. Also, at this point in time, the Ministry has finally concluded the long-awaited negotiation with NSC on the three other SOPs for spa, wellness, mice events and travel and trade fairs and one additional SOP which was just approved this morning, water theme parks. These four subsectors will start operating with SOPs from 1st July 2020. Certainly, travel trends will change for the time being, and according to travel analysts, international travel will take a lot more time to recover. Nevertheless, let us all focus on battling this pandemic and hope the situation will improve so that we can open our borders in the immediate future. Needless to say, Malaysia is safe for tourists. This goes beyond having low reported infection numbers, but also having credible systems in place if tourists get sick. Before I end my keynote address, once again, I would like to express my thanks to the organizing committee for their efforts in arranging today's session. I would also like to thank all who are here this morning the players who move and shape the industry. I look forward to your ideas and recommendations to restart and revive the tourism and cultural sectors with the hopes of emerging stronger and more sustainable than ever before. Thank you and stay safe.